we still have to find ways to be connected to it. And that is to always make sure that you have clear goals. How much money do you want to make this month? What money has come in? What money is going out? What could you do today to bring in more? Like, are the activities that you're doing actual revenue generating activities or are they busy work? A lot of times we avoid the stuff that could actually make money. Welcome to the Designers Oasis podcast. I'm your host, Kate Bendewald, interior designer, mama, and CEO of a thriving interior design business built on authentic word of mouth referrals. It wasn't that long ago that I stepped away from my corporate architecture job to build my own dream, one that would allow me more time with the people that I love, the ability to serve my clients at the highest level, and to make a great living. It wasn't always easy, and I've made my share of mistakes along the way. Fast forward to today, and I've learned a thing or two. This podcast is for you, the inspired, creative, ambitious, and let's admit it, occasionally overwhelmed interior designer who shares this dream of transforming lives by transforming homes. Join me and my guest each week as we walk through practical ways to build an interior design business you love and helps you transform your clients' lives. You can do this. Thank you for letting me spend part of this day with you. Let's get to it. Well, first of all, I just want to start by saying thank you so much um, for joining me and speaking with our members. Um, I, as you know, I'm a big fan of you and your work. Um, And for those of you who are um, watching and have never met Jenny before, um, I talk about her and reference her quite a bit. She has really transformed my life, both personally and professionally. Um, So Jenny's a certified money coach, and her business is called Financials for Creatives. And uh, you are also the creator of the uh, Money Compass deck, which you were working on when you and I were working together a few years back. Yeah. And now a full-fledged, like, physical thing. How, how does that feel for you? It, it's still kind of uh, unreal to be able to see it and uh, to work with it. And I'm so grateful that you were part of the beta testing and to make it into what it is today. Oh, well, I was honored to be a part of that for sure. It's funny because just on like a personal note, like we were both going through, um, like I was trying to relocate and move and I was getting your help with like trying to figure out how all of that would work. And you were creating this thing. And I feel like there, we've had some history between us at this point. Cause yeah. <laughs> you've had a baby since then. I'm now in a new space in a new city and I very much thank you for your help in in helping us figure that out so thank you for i mean you did the work ah you're always so generous in that way (laughs) thank you same to you i want so tell do you have a presentation today or are we just chatting i don't remember what we did i i think we're just chatting okay Uh, i like the back and forth and just having a conversation about money and money confidence and you know money blocks and things like that Yeah. Oh, good. Well, that's my preferred way to go about it, too. So I'm excited. Um, So I want you to share a little bit with the group about your journey going from a pet photographer to being a certified money coach and the work that you're you're doing today and and how that um, happened for you. Yeah. So I, I come from a a research background. I worked at University of Pittsburgh for 10 years in cell cell biology and looked at cells and things in microscopes and, you know, spent a lot of time in dark rooms. And then I started doing photography on the side, um, pretty much as a creative outlet. I was doing the part-time MBA program and I was really turned off from the corporate direction that I could go in. I was like, nope, that's not... (laughs) who I am or what I want to do. So I started photographing pets and their people and that connection. When I 
made the transition myself into leaving my full-time job and taking on a very niche business. Women in my local network started coming up to me and asking, can you help me with crunching the numbers and figure out how I can leave my job to, to do my dream? And it initially just started as, you know, coffee dates and we couldn't help it but crunch some numbers and when I saw the results that could happen in a matter of months I was like this is what I'm supposed to do and then I started taking on creative clients uh, mostly photographers initially because that was the industry I knew and then helping them with the number side and I guess in that sense I'm a little bit of an anomaly in, in that I'm creative, but I love numbers and love making sense out of them. So it felt like almost like coming out of hiding to transition into being a money coach and being able to own that I I love the number side. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that um, I love it when I meet humans who are so dynamic in their ability to flex their left and right sides of their brain. Um, but I, I feel like you're a little bit different though, because you can take um, something as um, you know, cut and dry as numbers, but you put it into a really um, heartfelt way and, and bring it back to story and bring it back to um reminding people how you can create your own story depending on your relationship with money. So I, is this your, earlier, I was looking at your Instagram. Uh, you always pop up in my Instagram and I noticed that you're now doing weekly or maybe it's monthly letters and you, uh, everybody that's watching go sign up for her, her email. Cause it's, it's very good, but you put in there, um, you know, to get your story about when you almost quit your creative business and what happened as a result. And so I know that email's already gone out. Is that something that you can share with the group about? I can share a little bit briefly. Sure. Um, it's a it's a bit of a triggering topic because it um, it um, it was a situation of domestic abuse, oh, wow. and it. I don't know if that's a topic for th this format, <laughs> but I, without going into any details, I actually haven't sent out that email yet. It's going oh. out tomorrow. So everybody go sign up for her email. That <laughs> and I so that, that, that will be my warning. And because it, it's, it, it's such a sensitive topic, but it also, it happened as a photographer and with one of the clients I worked with there and how difficult it can be sometimes to notice uh, domestic abuse. But it also um, informed my why for going forward with mm -hmm. the coaching business and how important it is that women know how to feel confident with money and not putting their our head in the stand, which can be really uh, common. And wanting to defer the responsibility to a spouse or a partner. And that has been something that I've taken with me as a coach and to really help women stand confidently with money so that you, you know how to manage it and you know that you can take care of yourself if something happened. And so that's kind of the... <laughs> The, the short um, form of it. Sure. Well, I appreciate that. And, and my apologies for putting you on the spot there. I recommend everybody go sign up for her letters and, and, and read them. So can you um, tell us a little bit about your process and how you work with creatives um, in yeah. sort of unveiling their money type? Yeah. So when I first started out as a coach, I went to the stuff I know, which is how to set up a budget, how to learn to read your profit and loss report so you can make decisions with confidence and clarity. And the thing that I kept bumping up against in working with creatives was this immense resistance. Anytime we approached a, a practical system, 
the 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 doing generally is easy it's a step by step process but it's the the thoughts and the things we say about ourselves when we start to apply these new systems and the changes that we have to commit to in order to make a difference that start to creep in and i was like man the, the the practical stuff will never stick unless you you look at where these stories come from and i knew at that point that like the mba knowledge the accounting and the finance and and you know stuff was not going to be the solution so i knew i needed to add to my repertoire and that's when i got certified as a money coach looking at the behavioral part of money before jumping into the implementation. So I work with eight different archetypes that were developed by the Money Coaching Institute. And they highlight the both the positive and the challenging patterns that we have around money. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take a quiz on my website at financialsforcreatives.com if you wanna see where you're at in your relationship right now. It is not your personality. If it shows up uh, that your dominant uh, behavioral pattern is the fool, you're not a fool. It's just <laughs> a tendency towards, um, you know, restlessness and wanting to take risks and being adventurous and living for today instead of planning for tomorrow. So that's one of them. But it's it doesn't define your person which means that it can change when you look at all these different types and mm -hmm. see okay these are contributing to the challenges these are the types that we want to boost so that when you wake up in the morning you're showing up as a warrior the warrior is very goal-oriented and disciplined and discerning and you know can crunch the numbers but then the magician is the more flowy feminine part of us that is trusting and compassionate and believes that more money will always show up. So there's like the symbiosis that you, that I help my clients cultivate while also figuring out how to eliminate the, the sabotaging ones. Mm -hmm. Is there a money type that you see, like what's, what's the most common money type that you see is there one and yeah i do so i the names of the different archetypes is the innocent the victim the warrior the martyr the fool the creator artist the tyrant and the magician and the one that i see the most is the innocent the innocent tends to take the ostrich approach to money putting the head in the sand, feeling powerless, mm -hmm. but uh, seeking security and wanting someone else to handle money. Mm -hmm. And generally that's the easiest one to shift because what's needed is guidance, recognizing that you don't have to feel powerless. You can learn the, the skills needed to, to become confident. So I love working with the innocent archetype and I had a, a a fairly high score on the innocent initially too. Like mm -hmm. I will not do my own taxes. It, it just gives me, you know, all the sweaty. <laughs> 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 and, but it, it's important to recognize when, what those areas are and then seek the help so that you can get help with it. Um, otherwise the fool tends to show up a lot. Like don't, tell me what to do. I want it now. I don't want to look at the bank account before I buy it. And yeah, we. <laughs> okay. I have, I have moved away from it and it, but occasionally it pops up, but I'm, I had a strong fool show up uh, when I did my initial quiz because I'm like, I see it. I want it. I get it. Um, and in a, in it's sometimes at, at a cost, you know, at a bigger cost than you might realize. Um, but can I just give you a quick example? Because I feel like the work yeah. we did together, it's now been several years. Um, I just, I, this is a bit of a shout out to you guys and, and anybody who's um, thinking of working with Jenny. Um, so 
I am currently outgrowing the office that we just renovated in our house. And so I am trying to figure out because I, I am needing to hire, um, like, where am I going to put these people? Cause there's not room mm. in existing space. And so I went to go check out a few co-working spaces, um, last week and, um, one of them in particular is like, it's so beautiful inside. It's so beautiful. There's so many amenities. There's really great, smart people working there. There's just like this cool creative vibe and energy. And, um, it's, you know, it's kind of sexy, you know? And I was like, take my money. Let me sign the paper. <laughs> um, and that's really what my instinct was to do. Um, however, um, you know, I knew the cost and it is, it's, it's not cheap. Um, my business, you know, fortunately is, is growing and I, I can't keep up with the work right now. So we are also hiring and it's a good problem to have, but it's like, that's awesome. It's, yeah. You know, I just, I had to think about, you know, do I want to maintain this pace? Um, and so long story short, then I, I, I slept on it and I woke up the next morning and I said, I, I can't do this without considering some other options first. And so I got to thinking and we actually have a ridiculously large garage for the size of our property <laughs> that the previous owner built because they had motorcycles. And so I got oh. to thinking like, we don't need half of this garage and there's two doors. And so I've, I'm reaching out to, we're getting quotes and stuff to have it transformed. But I think in the long run, that's going to be um, plenty of space for the next couple of years. Um, way cheaper in like if I were to extrapolate rent over two years plus we're adding to the home value of of our home um and so the the point that I'm making is that I truly believe that my work with you um helped me in that moment to not make that emotional decision to go with the like expensive sexy workspace this is not going to be sexy it'll be clean it'll <laughs> be functional and um but i i attribute the work that we did together with giving me the tools to mm -hmm. really think about what are my um options here and do I have to have like the snazziest place or can I will this get the job done for the next few years and so I think that's where we're going to end up going but um it is work that will continue to serve me for the rest of my life I believe wholeheartedly in that <laughs> that's beautiful it, it gives me goosebumps <laughs> oh, no, this is when we talk <laughs> <laughs> and knowing you, I mean, you have done it in the past. You've had a home uh, office. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've, I've seen it. So I know you will make something beautiful out of the garage. <laughs> and you like, I mean, Perfect. this is what you guys do. You transform spaces into these magical havens and <laughs> bring so much joy. And what a good way to I mean you'll have the space at home you can still have your eyes set on a co-working space down the road yeah. when but as a as you grow into each expansion then maybe you're like eh co-working space is not it later either mm -hmm. so you're you're displaying all the traits of a warrior that is being disciplined <laughs> and discerning <laughs> Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, it is, it's not always the easiest path to take, I think. You know? No, no, no. And, it, and especially with the, the fool, because the fool will be very, very tricky and almost display itself as the warrior. And because it's like, but this is the good, this is the decision you should take. Mm -hmm. And so it will be very persuasive. But you you were able to slow down and think about it and i think i mean we all have fool moments we all have warrior moments and it's kind of that mindset um check-in in the morning like who do you want to wake up as mm, i love that can you share with um the group what are like one or two habits or practices that you would like to see more creatives employ in their day-to-day -day lives. You just mentioned one, like 
sort of waking up and being intentional about what archetype do I want to be today? And, and um, are, do you have other sort of like daily or regular practices that you encourage? I, I think in general, it's very important to slow down and to journaling can do that as a, as a really important way to stay connected, um, both in terms to just getting the clutter out of your mind, but also get clear on what's important to do. And I think the more you can check in whether something is emotional versus logical, and journaling has been a, a huge part of my daily routine. Just even just uh, staying in relationship with money. I mean, that's how my deck got created that money has money is energy. And we made it into coins and bills so that we could uh, make transactions happen. But like today, we barely ever touch money. When was the last time you you exchange actual physical money? And so it, we still have to find ways to be connected to it. And that is to always make sure that you have clear goals. How much money do you want to make this month? What money has come in? What money is going out? What could you do today to bring in more? Like, are the activities that you're doing actual revenue generating activities or are they busy work? A lot of times we avoid the stuff that could actually make money. But uh, if we, you know, sent out the newsletter and made them ask for money versus uh, go and, you know, update something or the, there are so many different tasks. Wow. So what are those tasks for you in your business? Yeah. So that's a really good point. And I, I know that especially early on, I was very, um, I would spend a lot of time doing things that were not necessarily revenue generating, you know, and one could argue like working on your website is revenue generating. Sure. If it's not optimized, but there has to be a point at which you're like, okay, it's good enough. We've got to move on. We got to get our shoes on, get out of the house, meet people, obviously pre COVID <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> start to develop relationships, deepen your knowledge, do other things that are, or like the other thing that I find I would. Um, and I've, I've talked to lots of designers and who've expressed the same thing. Like when you're learning how to do something new or you're needing knowledge, like finding yourself constantly on webinars, you know, or uh, constantly mm -hmm. uh, seeking information or how to do something better or, and, and that's good. Right. I mean, like I'm somebody that I want people to, I want to help shepherd people, but if you find yourself constantly in like learning mode versus doing, um, you're not yeah. doing necessarily generating revenue generating work. So for us, I know I would go ahead. I was going to say also, it can become a form of where you're constantly outsourcing where you get, um, you start to feel like you have to ask someone else for their opinion or their feedback versus going internally. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, as a business owner, it's so important to stay grounded in who you are and who you serve and what you do. Because if you constantly look for um, affirmation or confirmation from others, it can do more harm than good. So that's kind of where the, the journaling and the intuition piece comes in too. I'm very holistic when it comes to money, the practical, the behavioral, but also the intuitive piece, like really getting grounded in yourself. And because otherwise it's going to be a constant chase of sure. never really feeling enough. Hey designer, are you tired of wasting precious time with prospective clients who are not a right fit? Do you experience imposter syndrome because you know the back end of your business is kind of a hot mess? Perhaps you're experiencing growing pains and you don't have the tools, resources, or team to support you. I get it. I've been there. As an ambitious interior design business owner myself, I know the roller coaster ride this can be. Over the years, I've learned a thing or two about running a profitable word of mouth design business, and I want to help you find success too. 
How would it feel to wake up and face the day knowing exactly what to focus on next, having a roster of enthusiastic clients, including a paid wait list, and having the space, time, and creative energy to develop projects that you are proud of and are portfolio, if not pressworthy. I want to invite you to learn more about the Interior Designers Business Blueprint, a business coaching program designed exclusively for interior designers who want to serve their clients at the highest level while making good money, but without the burnout and overwhelm. If you're ready to get off the roller coaster, you don't have to do it alone. Join me inside the Interior Designers Business Blueprint and get the tools, teaching, and community you need to pave the way for an interior design business your clients love and you are proud of. To learn more, grab the link on your audio player or head to designersoasis.com forward slash blueprint. That's designersoasis.com forward slash blueprint. So would you say things like, I can think of some of the obvious, like revenue generating activities, you know, following up with people, um, yes, you know, social media or newsletters, whatever your digital format might be. And, yeah. And on, the, on the, yeah. Um, I would say if you're really early on in starting your business, some of the, some of the practical things that can really set you apart is creating a clear separation between personal and and business. It just makes everything easier to to not commingle your credit cards, for example, always using a business card for business expenses and personal for personal, to really train yourself to do that. Um, If you haven't read the book Profit First, that should be at the top of your to read list. Uh, It gives a very simple structure as to how to give money purpose in your business. And it gives you a really clear idea of how much you're setting aside for yourself every month so that you get paid. A lot of times we take care of the business first. Uh, It's our little baby. And the, the earlier on in business that you implement a structure like that, the the more profitable your business will be because it becomes less and less about how much money you bring in and more about how much is left over Mm -hmm. uh, when the expenses are paid so that you get paid too. Otherwise you will get burnt out and it won't be sustainable. So that one is really key. I would also say, make sure that you have a really good accountant Mm -hmm. that you can turn to because it's, uh, there's so many tax questions. I am not licensed to give tax advice and I send people to CPAs all the time. Mm-hmm. And I want it to be almost like your best friend. They shouldn't, if you go there with a partner or a spouse, they shouldn't talk to the spouse and think that that's the, the person who deals with the money. Like you're there with your business and you need to feel respected and listened to and get your answers uh, or your questions answered. I love my accountant. She calls the Department of Revenue whenever I have a question. I don't want to call them, uh, but she knows what to ask. And I mean, that's something I help my clients with too. Like, what should I ask my accountant? Sometimes we can be afraid of even knowing what it is we need to ask. And my accountant was the last person I hugged before the pandemic started. And that's kind of funny. And (laughs) I love that. So, yeah. um, so when you coach with, so you're offering group and one-on-one coaching now, right? I do. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. my memory is that you always start with this core money process. Is that still how you work today? I assume. Yes. And, yeah. So the, the archetype, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, can you explain kind of how that core money process works? And I love the way yeah. you talk about, I kind of know this a little bit, but can you just speak again to like why you did a little bit, but why is that core money process so important when it comes to like uncovering your money story first and why that is kind of a different approach than maybe what you might find yeah. with a money coach? Yeah. So it, it- goes back to when I realized that all the resistance that tends to come up around practical systems. 
and especially in working with creatives, creatives are very internally motivated and can have a very conflicted relationship with money. So I, I, I always start to go through this behavioral core process where we look at your, your money biography from your first money memory until today. And the reason why this is so important is because a lot of the way that you show up in your relationship with money as of right now was um, established when you were a child from the, the most forming years are from like five to 12 years old. You can go back and look at how did your parents talk about money did they talk about money at all? Was it something that um, came with a lot of conflict? Mm -hmm. Did your mom know how to handle money? How, what was her mom, so your grandmother's way of handling money? So what I see is that there are generational patterns that continue until I work with a client who says, I want to change the way that I operate with money. So you're basically saying you want to change a whole generational pattern into something more positive. So we, we look at where these patterns started and where they came from. And once we've found the origin and the, the patterns that are the most challenging at play right now, mm -hmm. I help devise a, an action plan to, to take it from maybe feeling secretive about money into feeling confident. So if you're feeling secretive, what, what are the necessary steps, both practical and emotional and behavioral and spiritual that you can do to start to feel more confident in, in your relationship with money? So remembering that most of these money blocks, the sabotage patterns that then becomes behaviors, didn't start with you. It started long before you. And you're doing important work in shining a light on it and creating awareness because most of them have been kept, they have been kept in the subconscious. And so sometimes we're not even aware of what we say about money. It just gets blurted out. And I'll ask someone sometime that, when, when this comes up for you, is that actually you or is that someone who has, is that a voice of someone else? Sometimes we can feel guilty that we're being successful and then it can come back to some criticism many, many years ago. And when you identify the source of it, then you can learn to distance yourself or shift it away so that it doesn't hold tension anymore. So you're, you're doing this big awareness work so that you can rewrite the story and start to implement the necessary action to shift. And in doing that, you can have two people have um, secretive as a block. Someone might feel secretive because of how they handled money in the past. They might feel shame about uh, debt that has accrued or, you know, that they should have been better or known better or, you know, whatever criticisms we put yeah. on ourselves. Yeah. But someone else can be secretive because they don't like to talk about money with a partner or a spouse. They feel that it feels safer to for someone else to not know about what money the business is generating or, you know, so that it can be, you can label the money block the same but the way that you heal it is completely different Whoa. the the person who feels um, shame around money or around their own way of handling money needs to look at okay how do i make the debt go away how do i learn to live within my means and build a budget and you know shift it into something positive so that it doesn't become this reason of wanting to hide. Mm. But the, the secretive person who doesn't feel safe to, to display success and things like that has to learn to trust or to see when is it okay to 
in terms of maybe it's not even a quantity that's needed. It's a state of feeling safe mm. that if I reach this level, like you may never feel completely safe, but it's like this um, source where you, the, you, you're searching for something that may never, you may never reach it. So communication and knowing what actually a safety feels like and looks like and learning to live with, you know, ebb and flow of being an entrepreneur. Oh, I could just listen to you talk all day. Like, yes, <laughs> I had goosies. So I have, I have one more question and then I'm wondering, could we work with the money deck just a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to kind of give the folks a taste and then we'll move into some, some questions. Um, do you ever come across and how do you handle this as a coach? Cause I will be honest, you guys, when I reached out to, um, I don't know if you can see the comments, but, um, Tina just said, I love everything you're saying. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh yeah. You talk about resistance a lot. And, and I know for me that when I first reached out to you, it was, it's because I was obsessed and they have a new season. So I'm newly obsessed with the show, the prophet on MSNBC. Um, and one of the things he does, cause he goes and makes over these businesses and I always enjoy his process of doing that. Um, but long story short, I was inspired by that to find somebody because I knew like I had no problem making money um, mm -hmm. or spending it, <laughs> but um, just kind of, knowing how to take the money that I had and putting it into buckets to help me understand like this much needs to go into savings. This much needs to go into like a rainy day fund. This much is like what I need to have set aside for like money that's owed. Right. Um, just to organize it right. Um, in, in business and personal. And so I certainly, did not know what I was getting myself into when I started working with you. I thought we're going to get out some spreadsheets. We're going to look at PMLs. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. I'm going to have this all figured out. And I was floored. It was like 10% that at towards the end, but it was like at the beginning, we did some really, really hard work together. And I'll be honest, because most of these people kind of know my story. You know, I had a very, challenging upbringing with a single mom and uh, even experiencing homelessness at, at a point in my life, um, I had a wild money story. <laughs> and while I was very proud of the things that I had accomplished so far in my life, I still was, you know, I had to do that work with you and it was hard as <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you ever find though that there are just some people who they just can't do it. They're like, I don't want to do this. I just want to talk numbers. I'm not willing to go there. I'm not willing to talk about the number story, the, the money story and those like generational, um, you talked about your money biography and these generational mm -hmm. sort of, I don't want to use the word curse, but habits and patterns and stories um, where it's just too hard. And, and how do you handle that? <laughs> It, uh, it does happen from time to time, and it's generally that they're not ready to do that work yet. Yeah. And it, it, it tends to become an, an exit point. But yeah. then I have followed up with uh, some of my past clients where that has happened in the past. And it might be several years later, but they come back and say, they say, Jenny, I finally, I did all this work on myself and then I started implementing some of the practical stuff that you were constantly saying and I get it now yeah. and that's that's the stuff we have to remember this is not something that changes overnight and also like the the blocks and the these the way that your story looks like I mean that's your whole life story and we have to take it in steps. So I think it's uh, honorable to recognize when you feel like you're in too deep. And I'm not a therapist. It's not therapy. It feels I, like I, it sometimes. It's, it's, very, it's, very, it's very, very, very deep. Yeah. But I can't say that, that that's what it is. And that's where a therapist 
is needed. Like if you start to do this kind of work, it doesn't matter whether it's money or it's, you know, visibility. It's hard building your own business and to putting yourself out there. I think you have to be extremely driven to to do this kind of work but it also brings up all the shadow work that needs to happen and so if you need to hire a therapist and do that before you look at your money or in conjunction with it so that you have the support you need i i do have clients who will come and say okay i, I went back to my therapist or I, I went and scheduled a session with a, a therapist because I recognized that this is going to bring up a lot of stuff and I'm like good because support is like the biggest source of abundance there is abundance is not a number it's like this feeling and I think as a as an entrepreneur we need to have support we need to have the right type of support and to be able to figure out what that is. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, support is abundance. That's my uh, <laughs> my little note here. Um, just a quick comment. This is, wow, I've had such an aha moment listening to you and thinking about my relationship with money growing up and now as a sole proprietor, mind blown. It's just amazing. I did not know going into working for myself how much work I needed in terms of my relationship with money. Um, you know, starting with like horribly underpricing my services from the get go. Um, being able to have money conversations with clients about what's realistic versus their wish list. Um, you know, not invoicing for all of my time because I was afraid of resistance from the client. Um, you know, before I implemented profit first, having, you know, this just giant bucket of money, but not really knowing like how much of that is mine and how much of that belongs mm -hmm. for clients product. Um, you know, and now I've figured that out and, and these guys have kind of heard, you know, my stance on that. So we don't have to go down there, but it just, it eventually caught up with me and I was grateful to have found you and to be able to uh, implement some of this in my business and personal life. But it's, it's hard running your own business and how like at every turn, it's always about money. It seems. <laughs> yeah. But, and also this work never ends. It doesn't end for me either. Um, and I, I became a mom eight months ago and uh -huh. they're new on the blocks to show up for me it. now oh my gosh <laughs> adorable you guys you post the cutest little chunky <laughs> cheek pictures that i love it yeah yeah so it's um when you do this work though it creates that awareness so that you can recognize what you need to work on next or you can you can spot the blocks faster mm-hmm mm-hmm Oh, so good. So good. Okay. Well, can you do a little demonstration of the Money Compass deck and tell tell our group a little bit about it and how you came up with this? And then uh, we'll open it up for some questions. Yeah. So the, the Money Compass deck comes with 53 cards and a guidebook. And the guidebook is covered covering three different aspects of working with money. I look at it holistically so that I hope I can show um, through a lens of body, mind, and soul. Uh -huh. And so the body is the practical systems piece of it. And then the you have the mindset and the, the soul connection, your purpose. Mm -hmm. So between your, your systems and your mindset set, you develop self-discipline and it takes a lot of it when you're working with strengthening your relationship with money yeah. between your mind and your soul, you're developing this trust both in yourself and in the universe that you don't have to do everything alone. And then between the, the practical side and the soul piece is intuition to, to really be able to connect with your, your heart or your gut, wherever the, your intuitive hits come from. And so 
I kind of call it befriend. I well, I refer to it as befriending finance. Finance means the management of money, and it's a Venn diagram. And Venn in Swedish means friend, so it's kind of a play on words. Um, but really? the the glue, yeah. <laughs> so befriending finance and bringing all of those components together, the the very center heart. The center part is a heart because it takes a lot of compassion to show up and do this work all the time. Yeah. yeah. So because money is energy and it's so intangible, I wanted to create a tool that you can have on your desk when you're working on your financial tasks or marketing or anything money related as a check-in or like to get a card of the day, or you can do it in conjunction with a tarot card so then you get kind of the energy of the day and how you work with that but also asking specific questions so you want to ask a how or a what question because it will give you an action they're all verbs why questions um, tend to be where coaching comes in so if you said why are you leaving me or why is what I do never enough those are like the deck will be like whoa 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 (laughs) now I get a little defensive so you build a muscle in working with the deck to see money as something neutral instead of piling all the emotions and thoughts and past with money um, onto it which we tend to do in our daily life so if you can practice setting that aside and coming into a neutral place where you look at money as a partner and two of you are in a relationship and you're either asking money what can I do to strengthen the relationship or what do you need in order to do xyz so it's kind of a two-way communication with money (laughs) yeah Okay, so you want me to ask a question? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I know it's funny because we've done this before and you did have to coach me a little bit about asking the right kind of questions. So let's see if I've learned anything and can get this right. (laughs) Um, So would this be a a reasonable question to ask like, um, what activities or what things could I be doing right now to move more towards being a warrior with money? Question is, what can you do right now to be more of a warrior? And the card is trust. Oh, I love the illustrations too, Jenny. They're just so elegant and simple and beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, Caitlin at the Crown Fox that I collaborated with, she really... um, captured the Scandinavian minimalistic design that I was after and she didn't have an easy task to design the cards because I wanted them to have the the feeling of each action so it's so important when you pull a card you you can go to the guidebook and um read what it says but it's even more important to to look at what comes up for you and my intuitive hit as an answer to the trust card for you is to trust that you have the necessary skills to to really embody the the warrior and you already showed that you did that this week so Uh. keep trusting that the the decisions you're making are helping i love that Thank i you so much. appreciate it she's getting me connected to my computer <laughs> yeah so trust also means believe confide and commit so commit is a good synonym to trust in terms of if if you're asking what can i do to be more of a warrior the simple thing is to commit to practicing those the traits or not traits traits would be with personality so we want to refrain from using that word but how can, no. how can you make the, the commitment to be more uh warrior like in your actions so like it, the the deck 
naturally enhances the warrior magician archetypes in it because all of the actions that you, that you receive through the deck are supporting in making the relationship stronger. So I just want to go through also the, so trust the reading for it goes, you are enough. Your dream is valid. What you have built will make a difference. Where you're headed is the right next step. The foundation that led you here is strong enough to hold your dreams and desires. Trust. More money will flow to you like the river. Let go with ease and know that more will follow. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I tell you what, though, I need that so much right now. It's so perfect. Um, you know, it's it. This whole year has been. It's been hard for everybody. You know, so many unknowns. Yeah. Uh, and so many things that you know we're having to deal with personally and professionally. And and you know, mine's no different. But experiencing growth can be scary too, right? Because you know, yes. hiring somebody, investing in a space, these are all like really big girl things. And I very often do not trust myself and feel like I, like you said earlier, like I need answers. I need to consult with people. And, um, you know, and so actually my husband and I did this excerpt, like a math exercise looking at kind of where everything is. Um, and I did you know, appreciate and, and need his help. But at the end of it, you know, there was this mix of like, okay, we have this data, we have numbers, but I also have like this intuition too about mm -hmm. what the right next step is. And that is just a part of trusting myself. So um, that was perfectly timed for me. And I'm sure that others here uh, can all um, take value from it as well. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, beautiful yeah. deck you have there. I highly recommend um, you guys get yourself the money compass deck. So, um, well, let's open it up for questions. I will tell you this group, some days they have questions galore and others, they're very quiet. <laughs> so I hope you guys have a couple of questions. Um, and I don't know if, if anybody might be interested in having you pull a card for them. Maybe that's a way we get them to yeah. chat, but um, if you're open to it. So I- Absolutely. So if any- I always struggle with like the question and answer part. So we have the Q and a portion at the bottom. If anybody wants to post our questions there, otherwise I think you can do raise hand um, is another way. And then I think I can make you live. And then, uh, okay. We have <laughs> one question um, mm -hmm. that is posted and uh, Nisha asks, how do I become a badass warrior, not so rigid and fearful? <laughs> ah, I would look at where the, um, the rigidity comes in and how to soften that edge. Because sometimes it, so it could be this rigidity where the warrior becomes over, um, exerted sometimes there can be too much of a good thing too where the warrior starts to do everything themselves instead of hiring the necessary support and mm -hmm. that's where there could be this rigidity of not trusting that others can do the work and to let more people in so that you can have more ease so I would look at where is the rigidity showing up and how can you maybe soften it a bit mm, I love that Thank you. Um, I, so I am going to, Nisha said, thank you. I'm going to click on hopes and I'm put answer live. Does that bring like this question? I don't know how that works. Okay. I thought that was going to bring her on. So hope asks, where can I find a description of the different archetypes? Is that in your quiz? If you take the quiz, you can either sign up for a complimentary call with me to go into your specific results and to get my take on what red flags that I see in your relationship with money. But I also send out a description of the different archetypes with the results. I highly recommend everybody do that exercise with Jenny. It's so powerful. <laughs> Okay. Um, and and uh, I will say that the um, 
So Deborah Price, who developed it, she is the founder of the Money Coaching Institute, and she has a book called Money Magic. And so that book goes into all the different archetypes too. So and that's required. That's a resource for a process. Yes, the first couple of yes, the first couple of chapters is required reading in in the coaching process. Highly recommend that book as well. Yeah, I'm glad you uh, reminded us of that. Um, okay, so we have another question. Um, Catherine asks, I'm a chronic undercharger. How do I overcome this? Not Very good question. <laughs> yeah. And it kind of, it's so easy that it happens. The um, I would look at what your systems look like. It's kind of where profit first would make a big difference in seeing like on paper how much you get to keep when you see that it tends to remove the emotions around charging sometimes we undercharge because we don't feel worthy of more or we haven't done the work to allow the receiving of what we should charge to to really make a living so anything you can do to to distance the emotions from the charging and mm -hmm. it, being an interior designer you guys make these you know big proposals so you can see on the paper what a job will cost it's still recognizing your own value in it I used to feel really sick to my stomach when I would go home from an ordering appointment with a photography client I would be driving on it on the highway and I would just be like, oh my God, how much did they spend on me? And I was like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, no, 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 no. It's not on me. It's the thing, the thing I could do that they were not able to do themselves. So what you are able to deliver to your client that they don't have the skills or the time or, you know, knowledge to be able to do once you can reframe it how you're helping your client you're able to better embody the worth and and to to practice saying the numbers out loud mm -hmm. so those are all you know the, the confidence boosting things you can do to to stop undercharging and i'll just add one more thing yeah. they usually a money block is not the only way. It doesn't just show up in money. It can show up in how you approach time and other relationships. So are you constantly over giving in the time that you, you spend with someone? How can you firm up those boundaries? And what's the reasoning behind it? A lot of times it can be because we don't feel enough and that's the part that we have to work on or that we'll be rejected if we don't do, you know, offer a certain price or give enough time. Or maybe you've never actually had it modeled how to do it well. So I know Kate can really model how to, you know, stand firm and confident in your business. I mean, that's how you founded this business. <laughs> Sometimes you have to fake it till you make it, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But I, it's yeah, so, it's still it's a practice. Yeah, it, it's it's. I love that answer because it's like two parts. It's one when you're undercharging. One, it's like get really clear on what do you need and want financially mm -hmm. for this to support you in the lifestyle that will feel good for you. Um, even going above and beyond, like, what do I just need to survive? Like, what do I need to thrive? How much yeah. do I like to be able to like travel or take time off to have kids or whatever those ambitious goals might be that you have. Um, but then also putting it into terms of, you know, sure. It's however many hours of like sourcing and drawing or whatever, put that aside and talk about it. Think about it in terms of what kind of value are you giving these people in non tangible ways? So you're giving them the freedom to have more time with their family versus trying to figure this all out on their own. You're giving them, you know, and I'm speaking in residential terms because that's what I know and do uh, myself, but, you know, 
if it's a, a family, the end results, you know, you're going to be giving them a space where they can thrive, they can have privacy, they can entertain and feel excited and confident, they can work from home, they whatever those functional goals are of this space, like you're giving them a, increasing their quality of life, and you're doing it in a way that uh, gives them time back in the process of doing it. So both looking at it in both of those terms, I think is a really smart way to think about how to approach yeah. your charging. Thanks, Jenny. That's good. Yeah. Any more questions, you guys? It was so quiet. I could pull a card as a general me message for the membership. Oh, I love that. And if anybody wants her to pull a card, just pop your question in there and we can ask. But I love the idea of doing a general one for the group. I wouldn't have thought of that myself. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do a collective reading. And if you want to experience a reading for yourself without uh, getting a whole deck, that's also something that I offer through the shop on my website where I you can pose a question. If you think of a question later and you want to have a quick reading, then you can go to financialsforcreatives.com and I'll pull a card and I record a short video and give my intuitive and strategic take on it. You're so, so generous. <laughs> it's fun. I I never knew when I got my MBA in finance that uh, this is what I would end up doing. But I just said to a friend of mine the other day that I I finally made it mine. And I think that's, as business owners, that's all what we need to do. It's you have to just kind of go to your strengths and that's something that we do as part of my coaching program too. look for the gaps and where where might your superpowers be underutilized and how can you make them shine more when you remove the the money blocks so it's fun to do that part too so we're gonna see what uh what you can do collectively to strengthen your relationship with money. Mm. <laughs> I love this card. This is Envision. Ooh, again, such a simple and powerful graphic. <laughs> and um, immediately I think of Envision what what a thriving, strong relation, relationship with money would look like. And in your business, what would your business look like? What would your personal life look like if you felt confident in the way that you handle money and the way that you show up? And just to, to sit with that and to envision it because sometimes the the block that we have is that we don't dream big enough so once you look at what it is that you would like then it's a lot easier to also identify what it is that you need to learn to to make that happen so we'll just see what envision also means predict foresee anticipate realize and speculate the message is, what is it that you are birthing? Create a vision of your dream. Dare to formulate it into words, images, and feelings. Follow the breadcrumbs that make that dream a whole. Bring it into existence by knowing what it looks like when you get there. The universe will lead the way. See the abundance already present in your life, and it will magically expand beyond your wildest dreams. Remind yourself of the big picture. Keep moving forward. Trust in divine timing. Oh, I love this card. <laughs> oh, so good. I love that. Look at the abundance that's already present in your life. Mm -hmm. and it will expand from there. Oh, boy. That is so powerful. I can't think of a um, better way to wrap up this call. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. I'm just going to leave it right there. Um, you guys, I um, thank you so much, Jenny. I want everybody to go sign up for Thank you. Follow her on Instagram, order the Money Compass deck, take the money quiz, and book a call. 
<laughs> so many good things. Yeah, I would love I, to I, talk to I them. know yeah. for a fact that the money that I invested working with you has come back to me probably tenfold um, already in a short time. So I'm grateful for That's that. That's wonderful. Could you, before we go, just tell the group um, where all they can find you? Yeah, so you can go to financialsforcreatives.com to take the quiz and to look at the coaching programs that I have. And um, there's a shop there for the deck, but you can also go directly to moneycompassdeck.com. I am active on Instagram at Financials for Creatives every day. And that's the easiest to sign up for my newsletter right now, where there's a little uh, link in bio to get added to the list. And I'm calling the newsletters Money Confidence Letters. I share stories from my life as a creative entrepreneur and just general money issues that I see come up with creatives and how to work with them to feel more confident because I want everyone to feel more confident and not be afraid of money. Oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you for having me. Sharing your gift and doing it in such a um, compassionate and powerful way. It's we're grateful to have you. you. All right. Thanks everybody. Uh, You guys have a great rest of your week. You too, Jenny. And we'll talk soon. You too. Bye. Thank you so much for letting me spend part of this day with you. If you're loving this podcast, please share it with a friend who you think might also love it. Or perhaps you can take just 30 seconds to open your podcast app and leave us a five-star rating. And if you have just an extra minute, go ahead and leave a review. This helps me so much and it helps other designers like you to find the podcast. It also adds fuel to my motivation to keep making great episodes just for you. However you choose to help, please know I appreciate you so very much. Thank you, my friend. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Today.